today, I'm Paul Rowe. The Second World War was only 10 weeks old when the British forces defending the fortress of Singapore were ordered to lay down their arms. 12,000 Australians were marched away to Japanese prison camps, many forced to build the infamous 400 kilometre Burma Railway with its 688 bridges through the jungles of Thailand. A quarter of them never returned. In 1943, Captain Ernest Gordon of the Argyle Highlanders reported a miracle at the camp at Chung Kai on the River Kwai. He was lying in a hut, recovering from multiple tropical diseases, when a muscular Australian sergeant dropped in for a yarn. Tough life around the copper mines of central New South Wales had accustomed this no-nonsense digger to hardship and danger. He told the Scot that he and his mates reckoned they'd seen the absolute worst in human behaviour. They'd been so shaken by their experiences they were wondering if there might not be something in Christianity that they'd failed to understand. Now they wanted to give it another whirl. But they wouldn't stand for any Sunday school stuff. They wanted the real dingo. Gordon was flabbergasted. He wasn't even a Christian. But being a fighting soldier and a university graduate was enough for these Aussies. He was the man to teach them. What if you find it isn't the real dingo? Ernest asked them. Well, we'll bloom and we'll know it ain't, was the reply. These Aussie boys were seeking a truth that they could grasp with both heart and mind. While the back-breaking work continued, through their readings and discussions, they came to know a flesh and blood Jesus. He was one of them, a working man with a family. He was no killjoy. He'd been homeless and suffered torture. His enemies had tried to destroy him but failed. He'd returned free and alive, as his resurrection affirmed. The prisoners realised that the law of the jungle was not for them. Faith would see them through the hell they were in. A spirit of kindness spread. The sergeant organised a massage team for those who'd lost the use of muscles. Others made artificial limbs and soon music was heard. Worship services drew increasing numbers. The camp was inspired by an Australian private who faced his execution by calmly kneeling, reading from his New Testament and then saying to his chaplain, cheer up Padre, it'll be all right. One day, the member of a work gang stepped forward to confess that he had stolen a shovel to prevent the guard from slaughtering his friends. The furious Japanese beat him to death in front of them. When they recounted the tools back at camp, they were all there. Among the prisoners, admiration for the brave Scott exceeded hatred for the guard. As they were being transported out at the war's end, some found they could even forgive their captains. When Ernest Gordon wrote the story, he entitled the book The Miracle on the River Kwai. And when they got back to Australia, I reckon that sergeant and his mates told and retold the story of the miracle that had happened in the death camp at Chung Kai. If you want to find more stories like this, go to theoutbackhistorian.com.au. This has been Paul Rowe. I'll catch you down the track.